Burlesque by Kamari 333 Chapter 32 By the Collar Part 1 Dan started walking with his brother. The two of them headed away from the beach. Red, who once more had his coat back, his contentment and satisfaction overshadowing his usual irritability and concern, and Lust, who was practically vibrating like a temmie on caffeine, radiating excitement, headed off in another direction. He knew they would be shortcutting home as soon as they found a secluded spot to go from. Papyrus kept looking at Dance, eyelights glancing to lock onto the tiny silver bell around Dance's neck over and over as though he weren't certain he had seen correctly the first time. Dance reached up to grip at the collar self-consciously, wishing he could hide it. He'd figured out how to walk around without letting the bell go off, but that didn't stop it from being visible. The bell went off the moment he tugged on it, making him curse and stumble in surprise. He didn't look at Papyrus, hiding his embarrassment as best he could by turning his head away. As soon as Dance had managed to bring his brother home, Papyrus turned on him. What is that gaudy thing around your neck? Dance snorted. It's a gift from Red. Some kind of cultural thing. It means we're dating now. Really? Papyrus set his umbrella down next to the couch. Huh. I suppose I will be expecting one from Raz, then. Or am I supposed to give it to him? How does it work? Dance covered his teeth, his shoulders shaking as he fought not to laugh. No, bro, it's something you only get when you're really serious about someone. Like, this thing lets even brick walls like Red know how I feel. And I think he mentioned being able to sense where I am at all times. That sounds creepy and stalkerish. I think it would only be that way if I didn't agree to it. Well, I suppose if you said it was okay. Papyrus sat down. It still looks strange on you. It's clean. You never dress cleanly. I'll get it dirty sooner or later. Sans! Papyrus rubbed his head. That is a gift from your date mate. You shouldn't allow it to be tarnished just because it is strange and creepy and makes you look effeminate. Shut up. Dance reached back, feeling heat creep up over his face and desperate to hide under his hood. He realized he wasn't wearing it, and remembered he'd packed it into his duffel, which Red had taken back to Lust's apartment with him. Papyrus snickered. <laughs> Do not feel emasculated, brother. You are very manly, no matter what you look like. Dance allowed himself to indulge in a frustrated noise as he sank into the couch. Shut up about me and tell me how your awful date went. Papyrus grinned wider. It was actually not as awful as I fully expected it to be. Raz was a gentleman, although he didn't share his food, which is fine. I had packed my own lunch anyway in anticipation of him forgetting about it. Then his smile fell, not quite into a frown, but into something neutral, which on Papyrus was basically the same thing. Then he even gave me a date gift. He rummaged in his bag before pulling out a small box, which he opened to reveal a flower. It is a rose that has been petrified in gold. Very pretty and thoughtful. He sounded almost upset about it. And expensive. That too. But hardly the point. The point is that this was a more than acceptable gift than mine, and I wasn't even expecting a savage and antisocial person like himself to be aware of dating manual etiquette. More than yours? Papyrus made a wordless noise, the intonation encroaching on outrage. I gave him a brooch, something classy and motivational. It said cool dude in sparkly letters, didn't it? You know me so well, brother, but he... he... Papyrus set the flower in the box down gently on the table, then began to gesticulate wildly. He had the testicular fortitude to bring me something personal and thoughtful and not generic because it absolutely aligns with my interests. And, brother, stop laughing. This is serious. Dance sucked in a sharp breath, holding it in. Not laughing, bro. You are absolutely laughing, even if you are not laughing. I can feel you laughing at me on the inside. Dance lost his composure, devolving into silent wheezes. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you are not. Okay, yeah, I'm not. Perhaps you're mad that your date was nice to you. No, I am not mad. 
I do not get mad. You're totally mad. I am just, just less than 100% happy that I allowed myself to underestimate my opponent. I believe anyone can do better if they try. Just, just not better than me. Dating isn't a competition, bro. It is now, and next time I am going to win. Dance froze. Wait, next time? Yes. Papyrus' smile returned threefold. We are going to enjoy a nice coffee together on Tuesday, and this time I will be the superior date. I will woo that small, angry Casanova so hard he will be begging for mercy and a steady relationship, which I will eventually give. The mercy, not the relationship. I am still skeptical as to his ability to meet all my standards. Dance shook his head. Go easy on him, bro. He doesn't know what's coming. You don't want to break his poor heart now, do you? Of course not. But sometimes you have to crack a few eggs to make an omelet. Or in this case, destroy a person's entire existential perception in order to prove a point. And I will still offer my platonic friendship. That will surely ease the pain. Of which there will be much, because how can the loss of someone as great as me be anything but excruciating? Dance slid over to give his brother a one-armed hug. Sure, bro. You're so cool. And brutal. And you are my brother, whom I love very much, despite the fact you have questionable taste in food. Dance chuckled. <laughs> Welp. He pulled himself off the couch again. Gonna go change real quick. You haven't done anything quick in four years. Dance sighed, smiling despite the stab of guilt and shame that pierced his disobedient soul. Got me pegged, bro. See you later. He meandered back to his room, ready to get out of his swimsuit and into some nice, comfortable, loose clothes he was probably going to sleep in that night. Assuming he actually got to sleep, he certainly wouldn't mind doing something else until morning. Red collapsed onto the couch, groaning loudly. He could feel dance in the back of his mind, a steady throb of echoed frustration overlaid with contented mirth. Given the hum of fraternal fondness, he'd probably be a while ribbing his brother about his date with the fun hater. A pulse of amusement confirmed Red's suspicions. Red decided to give Dance some privacy, tuning him out with a bit of fumbling. He could still tell where he was, back at his home, in his artisan district apartment, and he could still feel him there, his ornery little kitten, his, 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 his pet, Finally, finally, his, no more bullshit. But barring any warning bells, Red could largely pretend he wasn't there. A comforting weight settled on Red's lap. Lust had wasted no time sliding into place there, fitting perfectly, like always, right where he belonged. Sockets lidded, eyelights dilated and throbbing, smoking with a lavender haze. Red clutched at his hip with one hand, stabilizing him with his other hand on his back. Fuck, he was goddamn enthralling. Red pushed down the spike of alarm, riding the adrenaline rush of letting another monster have so much power over him. He trusted Lust with everything he had, despite knowing how fucking stupid he was to trust so completely. Red, sweetheart, please? Lust mewled, gripping onto Red's collar and tugging him into a kiss before Red had a chance to respond. Red held his pet to his chest, breathing in lust essence, that intoxicating sense of home, along with something subtle and fruity. Grape? Like wine? It was so mild and unassuming Red had had trouble finding it. It wasn't a grape flavor. It was that watery taste from actually biting into a grape that splashed on your tongue and lingered pleasantly. And fuck, did Red want lust taste to linger. A flitting thought passed that might have suggested just how dangerous it was for Red to let himself become so easily distracted. All coherent thought disappeared under a fog of contentment and compliance. Lust had his full, nearly, since Dance had a piece now perpetually handcuffed to his throat that he clearly wasn't letting go of anytime soon. Undivided attention, worries and fears vanishing like shadows before the morning sun. Red happily sank further into the couch cushion, the only program still running, the one making sure his pet had whatever it was he wanted. 
When Lust finally pulled away, batting his sockets and simpering so genuinely, Red knew he'd have given him damn near anything. And Lust wasn't asking for a damn thing. He was trying to give Red something. He was begging to give Red a piece of himself to make that same leap of trust and loyalty that Dance had made. As if a greedy bastard of Red's caliber would say no to a gift, a privilege like that. Red worried he was taking advantage of his pet, but not bad enough to even try turning him down. <laughs> Alright, sweetheart. Go ahead. Just take it off and put it back on. Red rumbled, his words slightly slurred as though he were drunk. He would have been embarrassed about it if he had the presence of mind to give a flying fuck what he sounded like. Lush shivered in his lap, peppering him in grateful little butterfly kisses before taking a moment to press their frontal bones together. Then he pulled himself upright again and brought his hands to his own throat, fumbling with the buckle of his collar. Red watched his fingers hesitate, trembling slightly. Red wasn't looking forward to the moment between the collar coming off and going back on. He knew the sense of loss in his soul was going to mess with him. It's why he wanted to do this at home, where he could be more certain Lust would be safe for that brief moment and Red could be close. The whole sitting in his lap thing had certainly been at the top of his list of things that would make this easier. He was glad Lust had thought of it. Lust finally undid the buckle, unfurling the collar from his throat. Red flinched at the sensation of their connection, the beacon that had told Red of Lust's existence being severed. A displeased growl ripped through him, and he was compelled to pull Lust closer to press his teeth into those slender, delicate cervical vertebrae that until a moment ago had been protected by his magic embedded in leather. Lust let out a soft noise before clinging to the back of Red's skull with one hand, still clutching the collar with the other. Red. Lust breathed, tilting his head to the side, again burying his throat to Red, trusting him. Red couldn't be certain if he wanted to stay like that, holding Lust closer yet closer, or pull back to let him put his collar back on. Red decided to split the difference, nipping gently at Lust's neck, making sure to be as gentle and well-intended as possible, as he made a few marks that would likely heal over in a matter of days. Lust whined, a brief involuntary noise that had Red laughing quietly. And then Lust was scrambling to reattach the collar. His hands shook even harder now, so much so that Red was tempted to help, but he couldn't, he couldn't. Lust had to do it himself. Lust finally managed to cinch the buckle, and just like that, all was right with the world again. Red could feel that Lust was there, there and his. And he could feel Lust let him in, let him in deeper yet deeper, until the first pulse of what Red knew was Lust's feelings came through, a hot, throbbing ache that came in stuttered echoes. Relief, excitement, love, love, love. Not the acronym, not the violent intent, but real, lowercase, love. Arousal. Gratitude. Dance wasn't even here. What the hell was all of this for? Red felt the world shift around him, the cushion under him changing from that of the couch to the mattress in the bedroom. The steady, unchanging pulse of love from his pet, as ever-present as Dance's frustration, was making him lightheaded. Son of a bitch, the guys were right. He was going soft. Then Lust wrapped his arms around Red's neck, dragging him down to lay back on the bed, and pulled him into another kiss. Red grinned into it, curling his arms protectively around his sweetheart, his pet, who despite everything, loved him, or at the very least, loved what Red was able to do for him, which was good enough. Lust pulled away, purring low, his face flushed slightly. Is it too much? He asked softly, hesitation and embarrassment evident in his voice. Red chuckled, tugging gingerly at the collar, smirking wider. Nah, you're fine, sweetheart, but... <laughs> he slid his hand down Lust's back until both of his claws were settled on the wings of Lust's exposed iliac crests. Feels like you might want a little help with something. Lust gripped tightly onto Red's collar. If it's not too much trouble. 
Never too much trouble, sweetheart. Red slurred, scratching idly at the bone under his hand. He was more than happy to help. It's all he ever wanted, to be useful, and now he could be. Lust seized the waistband of his swim trunks, elegantly rising to his feet to slowly slide them off. He tossed them haphazardly over his shoulder, then shucked off his shirt and vest, leaving him bare save for the collar and his socks. He settled back down on Red, straddling his pelvis and leaning over him, echoes of his desire brushing against Red's soul. Red, please... Lust whimpered, clinging to Red's collar with one hand and Red's shirt with the other, digging his fingers between his ribs where he could get the fabric to give way. Red easily rolled the two of them over, flipping their position so he was on top, Lust's legs hooked over his hips. Tell me what you want, pet, Red growled, looming over him. Tell me exactly how much you want it. Lust's eyelids glowed brighter, that wisping purple haze wafting from his sockets to color Red's vision. Sweetheart, please, I want you to ruin me, wreck me, make it so I can't see for a week because you fucked my magic right out of my- Lust's voice hitched, his eyelids rolling back in his head as Red obligingly began to scratch and knead at his ribs and pelvis. Echoes of joy, pleasure, happiness all reached him, as well as something like complacency. Red chuckled, leaning down to nip playfully at Lust's clavicle, pleased at how much his pet was enjoying the attention. Damn, sweetheart. So needy already? My shameless fucking slut. Always wanting attention. Lust shivered under Red's hand, his body growing warmer as Red spoke. Red could see lust magic gather in his pelvis, around where Red's claws had been scratching at his pubis. Echoes of both arousal and shame hit him. Yeah, yeah, I'm... My perfect little pet is what you are. Red growled, speeding up his fingers, the hand on lust's ribs sliding down to probe inside his ribcage, the hot, tingling sensation of lust's essence swirling around his bones, sending something warm up and down his spine. And you better remember what I said about my pets. Red scratched lightly at the inner surface of Lust's sternum, paying special attention to the seam between the fused joints. Lust arched his back, trying to grind harder into both points of contact, a nearly impossible feat given the location and angle, but he tried. He keened sweetly at the stimulation, clinging to him tighter. Red was just about to say something else when he felt it, that jarring shift of Dance's location. Dance went from his own apartment to Lust's living room. Red's hands froze. Lust whined loudly with his discontent at that development. The noise must have drawn Dance's attention if the pulse of curiosity was anything to go by. Red started to sweat. He wanted to give Lust what he wanted. But Dance might want his attention too, and he would probably not appreciate being left out, especially since Lust and Red were technically hosts and should be paying attention to him when he was over, and oh fuck, 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 shit, this was a bad idea, he should have waited until Dance got back and let Dance take care of Lust. Red didn't even have dinner started, what the fuck was wrong with him, why doesn't he ever fucking think before he acts, this is how mistakes are made, god damn it, he's a fucking moron. Dance sent a few pulses of alarm and confusion through the bond. He knocked on the bedroom door, two quick raps on the plywood. U who's there? Lust called out, voice surprisingly steady given how much he was sweating and squirming, equal parts frustrated and amused. Calm, came Dance's muffled voice. Calm who? Lust answered. Calm down. Lust's echo of confusion only lasted for a brief second while he blinked up at Red. Then understanding and sympathetic concern pulsed from him. Oh, sweetheart, it's okay, it's okay. He tugged Red down for a kiss, running a hand over Red's sternum through his shirt. The steady source of love never wavered. Two more knocks on the door. Who's there? Frustration and confusion and concern. Red could feel it coming in echoes from both of his pets. God, he was a fuck-up. Ken. Ken who? Can I come in? 
Red immediately started to pull away from Lust, going to let Dance take over and get his dumbass out of the way. Lust whined, but he let his grip slacken. Guilt and want hit Red in quick bursts, only fueling his own guilt further. He took off his coat, draping it over Lust for modesty's sake, before opening the door for Dance. Yeah, come on in. You're just in time. Lust was needing a bit of help, and I gotta... Chill. Red took a deep breath. Go take care of Lust. I'll have dinner ready when you're done. He started scooting around Dance, more aware of his larger frame now that he was trying to avoid being touched. Dance reached out, fingers stretched to snag a hold of Red's collar. The magic snapped and roiled in defense against Dance's intent, and Red only just managed to grip Dance's hand fast enough to shield it from the bite of his brother's essence. Careful, kitten. I shouldn't have to be careful with you. Dance snapped, a heavy echo of frustration emanating from him. He glared at Red, his discontent mounting. Red sighed. Just, just don't touch it and it'll be fine. Dance's grin tightened on his face, stretching imperceivably wider. He started to sweat, a faint glow emanating from his face. Echoes of embarrassment, desire, possessiveness, and nervousness overlaid each other in a pulsing wave that had Red thoroughly confused. As Dance's nervousness intensified, so did the glow and the sweat. Dance. Won't do the stay... The sudden, nearly shouted, garbled question threw Red completely off guard. He blinked down at his pet, once, twice. The pulses of shame from Dance, coupled with the increasing brilliance of his nearly navy blue blush, was more than enough to tell Red it wasn't some poorly executed joke. Lust shifted into a sitting position on the bed, a fond grin on his face reinforced by the echoes of amusement. Red managed to keep his composure for a full five seconds before the first snort of laughter erupted from him. What's so funny, you ass? Dance snarled, his echoes of shame intensifying. If you really wanted me round, all you had to do was say so. Red rumbled, relieved beyond words. Anything you want, kitten, just let me know. Dance took a deep breath, glaring up at Red. I want that collar off. He finally said, pointing at Red's neck. Red's hand reflexively went up to tug at the leather at his throat. This? Yes, that. Red clenched his teeth. He thought about the worry in his brother's voice the last time he'd had to take it off. He thought about all the text messages that had piled up on his phone over the course of a few minutes when he had been changing clothes, when Boss never texted him usually. He thought about the last time he'd taken the collar off and left it off, how hard Boss had squeezed him when they'd reunited, how quiet his voice had gone. I can't. And it hurt to say that. It hurt to tell Dance no. Red clutched tighter to the collar at his neck, wishing it was anyone else on the other side. Anyone else, and he'd have happily shredded it to pieces. Anyone but his brother, and he'd have had no reservations. But it wasn't anyone else. It was Boss. It was Papyrus on the other side. And no matter what he might pretend in the light of day, when eyes were watching and ears were listening, Boss wasn't invulnerable. Red knew what the collar meant to his brother, what it did for him. It was an inviolable trust. Can't do that to the Boss anything else. The silence that pervaded the room was as telling as the echoes of heartbreak. Red forced his grin wider as he shuffled around Dance and out the bedroom door, ignoring the heavy pangs of disappointment he was getting from both of his pets. He couldn't look either of them in the eye. Call you when dinner's ready. Fuck, he needed a drink. Lust clutched Red's coat around him tighter, fighting down his own disappointment. He didn't need to see Dance's face to know he was devastated. If Lust were being honest, he was too. 
He knew Dance would never be able to get as close to Red as he wanted with Boss's collar in the way. Dance punched the wall, a heavy crack breaking the uncomfortable silence. Baby. It's fine. Dance's voice was flat and cold, as chipped as his proverbial shoulder. It's not fine. Lust corrected him, keeping his voice soft and warm and as full of his own affection as possible. He slid Red's coat off and pat the spot beside him on the bed, hoping his boyfriend would let him attempt to console him. Dance took the bait, whipping around and diving onto the bed, pulling Lust into his arms and burying his face in Lust's shoulder, close to Lust's collar. The magic hummed invitingly, welcoming, resonating with the identical magic in Dance's. Lust wrapped his own arms around Dance, rubbing at his spine and scapula as he resisted his body's insistence that he participate in other activities. Dance's feelings came first. I hate that stupid thing. Dance finally whispered, no inflection or emphasis to be had. I know. I'm gonna get rid of it, no matter what I have to do. Let's talk to Boss about it, Lust suggested. He had good ideas before. Dance huffed. <sighs> Sorry I interrupted you guys. Want some help with that? And yes, yes he did. Lust wanted everything Dance had to give. His bones ached for it, burned for it. Red had riled him up with how much he cared, and now Lust just couldn't turn it off. Not even that awful fight could make it go away because Lust was just that disgusting. Dance gripped Lust's chin and pulled him into a kiss, possessive, commanding, affectionate. Lust melted into it, letting Dance take over, letting him take all the control. Lust's whole being cried out in ecstasy at the simple gesture at being touched being wanted, being loved. He submitted without hesitation or question, knowing his master would do right by him. Dance pulled away, shifting so he was on top of Lust, pinning him forcefully. Color. Orange. Yes, yes, please, 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 please. Lust didn't care if he was disgusting. He needed this. He needed this reminder that they were still okay that there was still love there. He'd only just gotten it. He couldn't stand it if it was taken away. He'd break, for real this time. Dance pulled back, scooping up Red's discarded coat and pulling it on. Good. Then Dance was on him, gripping onto Lust's collar and tugging harshly, yanking Lust into another kiss while his other hand roamed Lust's body. He gripped every bone, every inch, with a jealous fever, taking stock that everything was as he had left it. Lust didn't bother to hold back his noises, knowing how much Dance loved to hear him. Loved. That was the best part. Dance loved him. His master loved him. Dance pinched at Lust's pubis at the same moment he pulled his head to the side and nipped at his jaw. He's only in the kitchen now and he can feel both of us. Lust felt his soul flutter. Oh fuck, Red could feel everything. Good thing neither of us mind an audience, huh? Because he's gonna know every fucking detail. Lust gripped weakly onto Dance's collar, the bell jingling musically at his touch. He spread his legs wider, wrapping them around Dance's waist. Please, Master, I need you. I need it. I... Are you disappointed Red didn't fuck you into the mattress? God, yes. Lust confessed, only for Dance to muffle him with another kiss, his fingers working faster at his pubic symphysis, the friction against his cartilage making the magic in Lust marrow surge electric. Lust clung to his lover tighter, his lover, in every sense of the word, and holy fuck if that thought didn't turn him on more. Bucking his hips, enjoying every torturous moment as he hung suspended in that place between agony and bliss. Finally, Dance broke the kiss, licking his teeth. You know what? I think I better practice plan B, or... He looked down at Lust's pelvis, 
which Lusk could feel was heavy and damp with excess magic just waiting to take shape, burning with it. Should I say, Plan BJ? Lusk giggled, wiggling his hips. Ready when you are. Form it for me. Dance commanded, sliding down to level his face with Lust's pelvis. Lust wasted no time obeying, eagerly snapping his magic into place, sculpting his second body. Dance took hold of Lust's length roughly, stroking the shaft with a brutality that had Lust careening to that edge in seconds. He clutched at the sheets under him, slinging his legs over Dance's shoulders as he fought back his orgasm, loathing the idea of it ending before it even really began. Dance pressed his teeth tenderly to the tip, smirking at Lust with a face that bespoke satisfaction. Then Dance parted his teeth, and Lust could only marvel at the talent of his boyfriend's tongue dancing over his false flesh. Lust still didn't know what he'd done to deserve such good fortune. In the kitchen, Red felt the echoes of love, relief, arousal, and frustration. He felt the intent from his pets bouncing off of each other, and he heard the soft peals of the little silver bell underneath Lust screaming. Red ignored the surge of heat in his marrow and focused on his cooking. This was fine. As long as Lust was taken care of, as long as both of them were safe, it's all he could ask for. But god damn it, he needed a fucking drink. Hey guys, Mel here. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed it, please like this video, and if you want to see more, consider subscribing. I look forward to bringing you the next chapter. Bye!